Thus far, we've talked about SP, SP2, and SP3 hybridization. And in those cases, we were using 1s orbital and 3p orbitals. So the maximum amount of electrons we could put inside of those hybridizations was 8. So what happens when we get expanded octet hybridizations where we are putting more than 8 electrons around our central atom? The answer is these expanded octet shapes use d orbitals in their hybridization. So this is part of the reason why expanded octet hybridization was only possible for atoms that had an n value greater than 2. When this occurs, the d orbitals are available for use in hybridization. Here we're going to be looking at PCl5. And what's going to happen in this case, we are still going to use the s and 3p orbitals, but the phosphorus is going to grab a d orbital to form five equivalent sp3d hybrid orbitals. So notice we are still putting in five orbitals. We're getting five orbitals out. The sp3d represents that these hybrid orbitals are made from the combination of an s, three p's, and a d orbital. It's these five hybrid orbitals that orientate to form the trigonal bipyramidal shape that we get when we have five electron groups around the central atom, as predicted by Vesper. So now we have five equivalent sp3d hybrid orbitals. Phosphorus has got five valence electrons. When we put the electrons into the electron configuration for our five equivalent sp3d hybrid orbitals, we see that we have five unpaired electrons. These will then go on to form five equivalent PCL single bonds by overlapping with sp3 hybridized orbitals from chlorine. When we look at the Lewis structure, we can see that our central phosphorus has got five bonds. It has a trigonal bipyramidal shape, and the phosphorus is said to be sp3d hybridized. In this case, the chlorines have four electron groups, so they are sp3 hybridized, and so these PCl bonds are formed by the overlap of an sp3d hybrid orbital from phosphorus and an sp3 hybridized orbital from chlorine. Now we're going to look at SF6. Remember sulfur has six valence electrons. In this case the sulfur is going to be using an S3P 2Ds to form six SP3D2 hybrid orbitals. So once again we're putting six orbitals in and we're getting six orbitals out. These six orbitals are then going to orientate to form the octahedral shape. So we have six electron groups around the sulfur. These hybrid orbitals are all equivalent, and when we put the six valence electrons into them, we end up with six unpaired electrons. These are going to form six sulfur fluorine single bonds. Those bonds are going to be formed by the overlap of a sp3d2 hybrid orbital from sulfur and an sp3 hybridized orbital from fluorine. So the fluorines have four electron groups, so they are sp3 hybridized. When we look at the Lewis structure for SF6, we see that sulfur does indeed have six bonds to it, and this central sulfur is said to be sp3d2 hybridized.